all of us here are dealing with these problems. School probs. We're worried about our students being manipulated online. We're worried about them um, getting bad information online in the networks they're in. We're worried about bullying and so on and so forth. And what we're mostly doing in schools is we are reacting to these problems as they come up. And we're trying to deal with these problems one by one. And it is not working. And I can tell you why. It's because these aren't just school problems. These are problems in our society at large. And so of course you can't solve them by being reactive to these things one by one. You just, you can't. Um, so in this presentation, I would be negligent if I was like, here's how you talk to teenagers about social media. Like, it's not teenagers that are having problems with social media, it's all of us. So we have to keep that in mind uh, as we go through this presentation. Um, I think I'll be focusing mostly on this first bullet, on this concept of what our students are seeing and learning um, and how they're being manipulated online um, and what kind of epistemic inequality that's creating in our society. But I, I would be negligent and remiss if I also didn't cover some of these other things, which is, you know, um, these problems are happening at a societal level. It's baked into the, our, our, our economic model, uh, both adults and teenagers. We're all addicted to this. It's creating drastic power differences. And, um, it's creating economic inequality. It's creating geographic segregation. Uh, and of course, it's, it's harming um, people based on race, gender, inequality, and age. And what we're seeing in all of those things is an increasing in inequality in our society based on your ability to use these platforms and understand these spaces. So I'll start with my thesis. And it's wordy, so I'll, I'll color code it for you. Um, I believe our information system is fundamentally broken. And that's what the train wreck is on, on the right. And that's thanks in large part to social media. And that was kind of what that sla last slide was to try to prove to you. And I think what's happening in schools is we're creating and we're graduating our students um, into a world where they come to learn and they come to know in spaces that we have no control over. Uh, and that terrifies me. Um, and by allowing our students to go enter the world and learn and know in spaces that we have not vetted, that we have not mentored them in, um, we're really setting these kids up to see a widening gap of who understands these spaces and is fluent in it um, and who is not. Um, and, and tacitly, we're accepting much worse, um, which is the resurgence of anti-vax um, because of um, the algorithms that you can game, um, uh, and, and many other things. You know, uh, climate denial and the, the moon landing was fake and the world is flat. Like, those are extreme examples, but we are accepting that um, in addition to um, all the inequality I talked about in that last slide. So how do we solve this? Well, anyone who stands up here and says, uh, I can teach your kids you know, digital citizenship, or I can make them media literate, I can teach them how to spot fake news, it's not enough. Um, they're selling you snake oil, um, because it doesn't matter if you have something about digital citizenship or media literacy in your curriculum. If you do not get into social media, if you are not covering social media, and you are not in those spaces, you are not solving those problems, Okay, period. Um, so we have to transcend those buzzwords, which I'll define later and, and I'll talk about some frameworks to think about them later. But we have to get on social media, period. And then as specific as I can be, and this is from the program, for an individual student to succeed in this space, um, we have to help them become a lifelong learner where they're building personalized learning networks based on passions of theirs, whether it's academic, civic, or professional. Um, and they're engaging and collaborating and learning in spaces that we've mentored them in where they're getting great information and becoming great citizens. So let me take one step back and say how I got to that solution. So like many of you, I'm sure, I use social media to become a better teacher. When I got out of college and started teaching, I fell in love with the hashtag edtech and the hashtag SSChat because I was a history teacher. And I found that social media made me a better teacher, period. I was reading blog posts of teachers doing really amazing projects. I was engaging in dialogues and chats on Twitter to think uh, more critically about what I was teaching and how I was teaching it. It was amazing. And then I had this really simple thought, which is what has gotten me here today, which is, if I can use social media to become a better teacher, could my students use social media to get good at whatever it is they are passionate about and they want to get good at? So then I put that to the test and I said, well, if a kid tells me what he's interested in, 
could I get him a personalized learning network where he can learn from other experts and professional organizations, collaborate with them, start to produce his or her own work with them, and become better at what it is they love. So I built this website, put it to the test to see if this would work. I call it the social media marketplace, and I tell my students, you tell me what you're interested in. If it's, say, technology, my website will spit back to you um, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, podcasts, newsletters, all kinds of quality digital media uh, that's been vetted by me, a mentor, to help them learn about that thing on social media. 